but you're here with me, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Let's bring out your mother, Purette. Purette, you know that your children called us, right? Yes, I do. Okay. Because they are both very... First, say hello to your mother. Okay. Okay. They are both very, very upset. Um, so upset to the point where they think that you have ruined their life. Um, I understand, first of all, you got to understand that I've been there. Right. <laughs> um, I was a divorced mother with two very small children. Mm -hmm. And no money. I mean, Zippo. You, she, they were left at the babysitters for a week. If grandma was going to come over and take them right away, she didn't show up for a week. Mm -hmm. I mean, not that I'm faulting grandmother, who probably is a wonderful woman, is she? Yes. She is. For adopting you, but it takes somebody a week to do that. What are the other questions? You're not letting me answer the, ask the questions. What do you want to ask? Why did you leave us? <laughs> what? I met that babysitter, okay? Mm -hmm. She told me for a week you left us there. Mm -hmm. I've asked you about it and got lies. Why? Why the day I had my tonsils pulled weren't you there when you knew I was gonna get my tonsils pulled? You left the day before. Okay, that's a big issue with you, right? Mom, what about the tonsils? She really told us that that was very upsetting for her. I don't know. Gear up. Mm -hmm. Gonna be, okay? Right. Ready, gear up? Yeah. Okay. It's your call. I didn't go to that telephone. Come on out, Dad. <coughs> Steve, come on out. Steve, we know that you have not heard what the kids have said, uh, but they've told us some distressing things, and I would like to go over them, okay? You have not seen Nathan in two years and Kendra in four? It's been about three years since I've seen Nathan. Two okay. years and nine months. Why? Uh, that's a very good question. The last time I discussed visitation with their mother, I, I was uh, not responsible enough and that was our last uh, phone conversation. Anybody who doesn't pay child support or call their f kids once a month, at least once a month, yes. doesn't deserve to see them. Yep. Okay. What, if, what about people who move cross country without giving me any notice that you've moved? You've moved from see, California you were the, to you Colorado. You saw your son the day before we moved. Don't even. To California. This isn't and about you, you and California. I. This is here about okay. these kids. And this then, is not about where we live. This is about these kids. Well, for nine out of the ten moved years and we've never been separated. Even told me or made for ten years out of It's not like you ever tried to get contact with us. Yes, I have. Your mother knows how to do for nine years out of the ten. Wait, 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 let me take over. You have you called them on their birthdays? Ever. No, nor have I gotten called. So, fair enough, fair enough. I, I don't, I've never had their home phone number. I've, I've never had Why don't you try to find it? Are you too lazy? Your, your mother too told me drinking when, your beer? When, when your mother... Her mother's name's Jamie. Jamie. <laughs> Jamie. Come on out, Jamie. Why don't you ask your mother the questions? I want to know why you chose drugs over me and everybody else in your family. Because I'm a drug addict, Brandy. I was too. I quit. I got away from that. Went back to school. <laughs> You've been to treatment. Why can't treatment help you? Do you not want help? Yes, I do. And I've been doing good. And you have not kept in contact with me. You know how I've been I doing. I can't. How can I contact you? The only time I can see you is when you're in jail. Brandy, I have a phone. I've been I staying. I can't call you. I know, and I can't call you, and I'm sorry for that. I can't help the way the situations are right now. 
Yes, you could. Go to a pay phone. Why can't you, why can't, let me give you a Kleenex, son. Why can't you call her? There's a block on both our phones and it's long distance to call. Okay. There's no way to, there's no way to call? No way? Why have you not seen Brandy? I live quite quite a distance from her. It's a I half have no hour away. I know it's a half hour away, Brandy. Why have you not came to see me? Because I don't know where it's at. Yeah, I saw it when I left you know, high. You know where I'm at too. I do not know where you're at. We have a I vast country. Half an hour is not a long way. I know that. Half an hour. Why haven't you gone over to see her? It's a really important to her. I did not know that she wanted me to see her. She is not, you know. You try your best. You try your best. You make it your best. I try my best. You owe to her. You owe to her. She doesn't owe to come and see you. You owe it to her. Yeah, I gave her. You try your best. Yeah. And she closed the door on you. She closed the door. It was like the parents on the show. You feel you ruined your daughter's life? That I ruined her life? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I ruined the life. And he would like to make one last, last ditch effort to have her forgive him before it's too late. Sal, if you say you've ruined her life, how? What did you do? Well, uh, I started using drugs in 1962. And uh, my girlfriend at the time was 15, I was 17. And not long after that, I was arrested for drugs. She was pregnant. And uh, I went away, and I lost all track of her. OK. Well, before that, I would put my daughter up for adoption, because I couldn't handle her, and I wouldn't get married. I was, was she adopted by a good family? Excuse me? Was she adopted by a good family? I didn't know at the time. I didn't know who she was adopted by or what, but when I got out of jail, our plans were that we were going to get back together and we're going to find our daughter. But I didn't do that. I went right back out to drugs again. I robbed for drugs, and that was my life, in and out of jail, in and out, in and out. All I cared about, I didn't even think about her. 27 years later, she calls me up. I had just got out of jail doing 10 years in Texas. And I get a phone call. I'm your daughter. You're my daughter. I forgot about her. Forgot about her mother. Her mother was married again and had three children by her husband. And he had passed away. And then she convinced her mother to tell her who her father was. All right? And 27 years went by. And I'm worried, I think, that. So we brought Peter Bruckus from uh, NADPC. Hi, Peter. How are you? Can you separate the methadone? Every drug is tested for individually. Okay. Methadone, heroin, cocaine, okay. marijuana, etc. So will you go backstage with him? Sure. Okay. Please. Do I have results by the end of the show? We'll be right back. And what we have just seen right now are parents who don't seem to have enough values when it comes to their children. Don't you agree? Yes. And so, and so, since their children are hurting so desperately and need to find closure in their lives, this is a wonderful opportunity for them to heal and let their parents know what they really feel. Yeah. And I think it's a wonderful thing that they are here today to tell their parents what's really in their hearts. What do you want to do? What are you going to do with your girl?